Today's apologists claim many scientists believe in creationism. Oftentimes, creationists will attempt to add legitimacy to creationism by claiming that many scientists reject evolution and believe in biblical creationism. As evidence, they'll produce lists of scientists who have signed on to such statements. As of now, the Creation Ministries International website lists almost 200 scientists, the Answers in Genesis website lists a little over 200 scientists, and the Idea Center lists 480 scientists. But by far the longest list is from the Discovery Institute, which lists almost 1,100 scientists. Perhaps 1,100 scientists sounds impressive, but there are a few problems with that number. First, the majority of those scientists work in fields unrelated to evolution, such as material science, chemical engineering, statistics, mathematics, and so on, which means they don't work in fields relevant to the study of evolution, like biology, genetics, paleontology, geology, etc. And thus, those scientists aren't necessarily educated in evolutionary theory at all. Second, the statement asked of those scientists was misleading in order to get them to sign on. It read, We are skeptical of claims for the ability of random mutation and natural selection to account for the complexity of life. Careful examination of the evidence for Darwinian theory should be encouraged. Since every theory in science must always be open to skepticism, and evolutionary theory has evolved far beyond basic Darwinism, the statement is accurate. But contrary to what the creationists wish to imply, it doesn't mean that any scientist signing on to the statement rejects evolutionary theory or accepts creationism. Third, many of the scientists whose names appear on that list never even signed on to it, and others may not even exist at all. It's also important to note that some of those lists contain a bunch of duplicate names, and many dozens of names appear on multiple lists. Thus, at best, we can say there are perhaps several hundred actual creation scientists in relevant fields on all the lists combined. But the biggest problem is that the whole collection of lists thing is an argument from authority fallacy, since whether or not something is scientifically accurate is not a popularity contest, even if it comes from experts. What matters is the evidence they can present to support their positions, and that evidence overwhelmingly supports evolutionary theory. Now, despite such lists being fallacious, the scientific community won up to the creationists by creating their own tongue-in-cheek list of only scientists whose names are some form of Steve, in honor of evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould, who signed on to this statement. Evolution is a vital, well-supported unifying principle of the biological sciences, and the scientific evidence is overwhelmingly in favor of the idea that all living things share a common ancestry. Although there are legitimate debates about the patterns and processes of evolution, there is no serious scientific doubt that evolution occurred or that natural selection is a major mechanism in its occurrence. It is scientifically inappropriate and pedagogically irresponsible for creationist pseudoscience, including but not limited to intelligent design, to be introduced into the science curricula of our nation's public schools. As of July 24, 2020, 1,457 scientists have signed on to the list. Be aware that only about 1% of the people in the U.S. are named Steve, which means that if the list were open to all scientists, it would contain the names of over 140,000 scientists who support evolutionary theory. Generously compare that to the number of names on the longest list of creationist scientists, 1,100, and you can get a good idea of how tiny a percentage creationists represent. And that ratio only gets much worse if we include scientists from all over the world instead of just the United States and its disproportionately high number of creationists. Of course, I'm not advocating for claiming something is true based on an argument from authority fallacy and these lists only represent a small fraction of the actual number of scientists. But the point is that more than 100 times as many scientists accept evolutionary theory as believe in biblical creationism. But what about the remainder, the less than 1% of relevant scientists who believe in creationism? Well, 
The leading creationist organizations require their scientists to ignore any evidence that contradicts their religious beliefs. From the Answers in Genesis Statement of Faith, by definition, no apparent perceived or claimed evidence in any field, including history and chronology, can be valid if it contradicts the scriptural record. From the Creation Ministries International, Doctrines and Beliefs, no interpretation of facts in any field, including history and chronology, can be valid if it contradicts the scriptural record. From the Creation Research Society Statement of Belief, the Bible is the written word of God, and because it is inspired throughout, all its assertions are historically and scientifically true in the original autographs. From the Institute for Creation Research Tenets, the Bible is the divinely inspired revelation of the Creator to man. Its unique, plenary, verbal inspiration guarantees that these writings, as originally and miraculously given, are infallible and completely authoritative on all matters with which they deal, free from error of any sort, scientific and historical, as well as moral and theological. What this means is that the members of these creationist organizations automatically make their claims in exclusion of the evidence that proves their claims wrong. Thus, even if there are a few creationist scientists who have relevant degrees, they aren't good scientists at least not in fields related to creationism versus evolutionary theory, because they ignore all scientific evidence that contradicts their beliefs. And nothing is more unscientific than ignoring evidence.